folks. Just want to give you a little update on what was going on with my uh, ATN scope here. Um, I received this a few months back. You saw in another video when I did the unboxing. Uh, this here is the ATN Thor 4 384 125 5X. I received it and upon receiving it, I ended up ordering this uh, pellet rifle. This is a Gamo Swarm Maxim 10 time times generation 2 22 caliber. So I, I actually purchased a different gun that I was waiting for to mount the scope on. Um, but it was back ordered and it didn't look like it was ever going to come in. So I, uh, I ended up changing my plan and getting this, this gamo here, which is a breech load here and or break action. And, um, so far so good. Uh, we'll talk about the gun at a later time, but, uh, for now, this piece is going to be mounted on here. We're going to use this for just uh, planking and uh, predator control. Um, in the future, it's going to be going on a 22 250 um, and possibly a 243. I'm not exactly sure, but also maybe a 1022. We'll see. We'll see what develops. So, upon uh, receiving the, the ATN scope, it did have to sit for a little bit. Um, until I received my uh, new gun here. But once I opened up the package and tried to fire up the scope, I ended up with uh, just a blank white screen inside with the crosshairs and there's um, a couple, what do you call it, uh, scales on, on either side, like uh, for angle and, and stuff like that, for, for like a, almost like a pitch and yaw. But I could not get this thing, I could not see through. All I saw was the white screen. And it was annoying as heck. So I got I had to deal with the customer service, um, which was very good. I dealt with this guy, Ethan. Uh, Ethan Vaya, I believe his last name is. He talked me through quite a bit. We tried to update the firmware, which was already the latest version. Um, that didn't solve the problem. I tried hard shutdowns and boot ups and everything that did not solve the problem. We finally come to the conclusion that it needed to be sent back to ATN. So he sent me a tracking label and I sent it back in the original box, which I, you know, wrapped it up, packaged it nicely. Um, but they received it after a few days. I'm not in love with FedEx lately. They really kind of play a lot of games but they received it and when they got to looking at it they said something in the nature there was a shutter inside that wasn't actuating so i don't think it was much of a fix i think uh they fixed it relatively quick and the turnaround was was about a week week and a half uh, i was happy with the turnaround but when i received the scope um, it fired up and it seems to be acting the way it's supposed to so that meant I was not crazy but it definitely needed some service so having said that I got as far as um, now when I when I paid for this I, I got this deal a little, it, it, with tax and everything it was around two thousand um, dollars but I they also gave me this cantilever mount which I really like because that allows me to get the proper eye relief. And that was part of the deal. It was about $200 worth of add-ons that I got or accessories at no extra cost because I ordered through the main website, atncorp.com. I also got the external battery here, which at this moment in time, I'm not necessarily sure I even need this battery on here so far. I mean, granted, I haven't used it a lot, but so far it seems to be really good. This external battery, I know I'll need in the future anyway, because we'll be doing some longer night hunts and stuff like that. I'm hoping to 
be going for some hog or coyote, things like that. So for now, it's on this gun. Yesterday, I went through the zero sequence. It, I didn't film it because it was really windy. Um, it, was, it was crazy out there. I think I gotta stop saying the word, um, driving me nuts. The process for zeroing is actually pretty nice. You just make sure that your ballistics is shut off and that you have the proper uh, scope in the settings and then you go to zero reticle and you take your first shot so now wherever let's say you're a little low right what you would do is you you would track the secondary crosshair over and down and put that crosshair as centered as you could get it over your shot placement and then once you hit save and exit, the scope puts that crosshair on the bullseye where your gun actually hit. So now when you take your second shot, you're going to be almost dead on, like real close. Now I'm only sighting this one in at about 35 yards. Uh, my shots with this piece aren't going to really be beyond that, and it's if it is, it's not going to be by much. But now you take you zero in on the on the shot like you take your second shot you zero in on it and you do that sequence again except with the zoom all the way in and when you do that you're fine tuning that shot so now that that second or third shot that you're going to take is going to be like dead nuts and just to say in comparison this gun here this uh this swarm maxim Camo Swarm Maxim. This gun shoots with a wallop, but it's solid. It shoots beautifully compared to my other Gamos, and I have several of them. This one here is going to be a fun gun to shoot. It's it's solid. There's no twang. There's no no nothing, and it really punches the target. I like it, but we'll talk about the the gun in another video. Um, I just want to talk about the customer service for ATN. I thought it was phenomenal. The website also has um, a lot of videos that you can go to for reference and it really walks you through a lot of the issues you may have or sequences you need to go through. Using the controls here is, is really easy finding the settings and everything inside here is is really it's almost self-explanatory and I'm not like a an electrical uh, engineer or you know electronics major or nothing like that but I can find my way through here and navigate it pretty easily doing the doing the uh, zeroing sequence might get slightly confusing but I got through it without any issue. I can't wait to shoot again. I was going to do this video outside today and take a couple shots, but it's pretty windy out there. I'm not going to bother. I'll get this thing uh, sighted in on my day off in a couple days or this coming weekend. But I, I definitely want to stress how good I thought the ATN customer service was and definitely two thumbs up to Ethan over there. Um, he seemed to go out of his way to, to help me and, and remedy this situation. Without, you know, I didn't feel like an idiot and nothing like that. Because this is my first thermal scope. Hopefully not my last. I'd like to get another one at some point. But um, they were very good. Very good. I would definitely recommend the company and... The price range for this scope, I've been waiting quite a long time. I've wanted one for a long time, and I've been waiting until I can have a reasonable price. Uh, can I justify it even at two grand? I, yes and no, yes and no. I'm gonna be retired in a short time, and I'll be using this thing a lot when I retire. Now, having said all that, they have another version of this now, it's the LT, 
which doesn't have all the bells and whistles of this and the price range is considerably less. Now I might have thought about purchasing one of those if I did a little more research, but I think one feature that would make me go to this one over that, even with the cost, is being able to record your shots. You can put your little hunts on video with this uh, scope itself, and then you can transfer that data to your editing software and what have you. So I really like that feature. After that, I mean, there's not much to say at this moment in time, but I just wanted to let you guys know and, and give you an honest review so far of where I'm at. And um, we'll go a little deeper into this once, once I get this thing zeroed in and we get a little bit of night shooting in, I'll try and set up a target to where uh, you can see, I'll record it and we'll go from there and see how it goes. So now the scope does come with this nice uh, neoprene cover which has a little pocket inside here and if you wanted to keep your charging cord in there you can do so. Um, what I did to mount the external battery it has this nice uh, saddle wrap around here. But it has this nice wrap around with a zipper pocket. It was a little tight getting this in here, but what I had to do is I actually cut a little tiny hole in the bottom of this thing. Make sure this sucker stays up. I had to cut a little tiny hole and I fed my cord through there. And then on this side of the gun, which you can't see, but I'll, I'll snap a picture for you. I got the cord just kind of zip tied right here. It's out of my way. It's not gonna be intrusive. And then I have the end right here that I can plug into the scope when I need the external battery. For now, it's gonna stay just like that. And I mean, it does add a lot of extra weight to it, but um, uh, it's not that big a deal. I'm in the process of purchasing a tripod. What do you call it? The bog? I believe it's the bog. Um, the plastic one, not the, uh, or, I'm sorry, the aluminum one, not the, composite or whatever it is carbon I think I want to say it's a carbon carbon uh, stamp but I'm gonna get that and and that'll steady the rifle to be a lot better for nighttime shooting so because it does have some weight to it and you're not gonna hold this thing up for any length of time without a good rest but it comes with this nice neoprene cover and I just keep this uh, partially unzipped sneak it on here and then uh, you can you know Zip it up a little bit here, which I'm trying to be ginger here. It's on the stand. There we go. But and it, it's nice enough to protect it. Uh, I'm kind of happy with that. I guess that's uh, all I got to say about it for now. And uh, we'll keep you posted on the success or you know any pros and cons to this setup. I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there that'd be interested to see how this does, how it performs. But so far I give both the gun and the scope a couple thumbs up and uh, we'll go from there. Until then, uh, thank you for watching and we'll talk to you soon.